Did you know that coders need a special monitor for coding? No? Well, neither did I. <laughs> but then Ben Q came up with this. I guess that's a sign I need to go to the gym more often. Ultimate coding productivity. The first monitor for coders exclusively. It'll be fine. Oh, 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 on this side, it says, the best monitor for programming. What I wanna know, is that just marketing hype? Because I've been using regular LG's Ultra Fines with my MacBook for years, and I seem to have been okay. What is a programming monitor gonna do for me that I can't do with my LG's? Below 4K, you most likely won't write good code. Also add it to your CV. Companies look out for monitors that you've used in the past. You need at least 144 hertz for peak Neovim performance. My company started refusing CV if they don't own an AK monitor. I have have two ultra wides and can't stop offers from coming in only one of them is 4k just so i leave some jobs for everyone else <laughs> So at first it seems kind of funny to have a special coding monitor because you're just looking at text, right? I know there's some color accurate monitors for people that do professional photography or videos, but programmers, do we really care? When you think about it a little bit more, we look at text for a big part of the day and the text could look like this or this or like this and so on. Personal preferences about dark mode versus light mode aside, you'll want to have a high density monitor to reduce eye strain from staring at the screen all day that's going to be important now i've been using my lg ultra fines i have two of them one is temporarily over here these are 27 inch 4k displays probably 16 by 9 ratio i'm guessing in other words they're very wide and not too tall and this is good for certain things like video creation photo work but it's not necessarily good for programming by the way these lgs have been really good they're still really highly rated on amazon and they've come down in price quite a bit since i bought them still a good buy i'll link to them down below if you want to check them out i like their color and i like the way they look with the mac now the reason i have one of these up and the other one not is because because I've been actually trying out this monitor right here. And that's the 24 inch version of the big guy I have down here. I've been trying it out for the last couple months. So I have an idea about what this monitor is all about now. Whereas the first time I looked at it, I made a video about that. I used it in a vertical orientation, which is fine, but I didn't really get the sense of what the monitor is for at that time. Now I do. So let's go over these things. All right, let's see. Sorry, I don't have an overhead for this one because this is a giant box and it's not gonna fit on my desk. Cables galore. USB-C, HDMI, power. What is this? What? Okay, I, I know I've seen this before, but I cannot remember what the heck this is. It's USB. Look at this. I'm just kidding, not that one, this one. I don't think I use any USB that's shaped like that one. You get that too. A hammer. No, this is a stand, but I don't use a stand here. I have arms on my desk. Oh, this is not a stand. This is an arm. Oh, wow. This is not just an arm. It's a pretty heavy duty arm. Wow. This just clamps onto my desk like my other arms do, but it has its own calibrated mechanism for controlling the monitor. I think I might switch to this if I end up using this. I mean, if you're gonna be using that monitor, you might as well use the arm. And here it is. Now this is a 28 inch monitor, which is the biggest monitor I've had in my office ever. I don't like huge monitors, but this one is different. So I got the 28 inch, the RD280 out of the box. But before I put that up here, I just wanna show you what I've been doing with this 24 inch version and some of the things that BenQ added to this monitor to make it more developer or programmer or coder oriented now first of all let's get this uh, elephant that's in the room out of the way quickly because this thing is not very pretty right the aesthetics are just a little bit outdated sure it seems like it might have thin bezels but it kind of doesn't because you can see that there's external bezels and then there's internal bezels and then there's this well let's just say that it's pretty obvious this kind of chin got these ridges and then there's this box sticking out here this is the controller box that you can have easy access to menus for example look at this cute little angle brackets logo here but this allows me quick access to the coding menu <laughs> have you ever had a monitor with a coding menu so this is for dark theme and there is another preset these are essentially presets right you can switch quickly between dark theme light theme cinema which is if you're watching movies or if you're watching a 
YouTube videos like this one, you can enjoy it in cinema mode. And then of course, I'm on dark theme right now in VS Code. Let me tell you, this is an IPS panel, not an OLED panel. So that means you don't get full black blacks like you would with an OLED screen, but I'm using it with Windows right now and the text is crystal clear and sharp as a razor blade. Really easy to see text. Now, when I first hooked this up and I was using this with my Mac, I did not appreciate it enough because there was some kind of scaling thing going on and I probably wasn't doing something right. But ever since I started using this with Windows, it looks beautiful right out of the box. So on the menu system here, you have your coding related functions like the power key LED. These are the LEDs that are down here. You can control them down here and you have a lot of eye care functionality. For example, night hours protection. If this thing is set to auto, the monitor will automatically detect if it's dark or light in the room and automatically dim accordingly. There's also something called BI Gen 2. Don't ask me what that is, but it's some kind of intelligent thing that's built in and it's got a little owl logo. Isn't that cute? This monitor is designed to take care of your eyes for you without you having to remember. Now my Mac has basic functionality, right? I can turn on night mode, I can dim the light or I can brighten the light. When I'm in a bright environment like this, I like to have it all the way bright. When I'm sitting on my couch at night, I like to dim it, but this monitor will do that for me automatically. I don't typically work with this bright environment. This is mostly for doing content and videos. Let me show you what it looks like here when I'm actually programming. It looks more like like this, but it wouldn't make for a very good video. So now when I switch my coding menu here, I can go to adjust the brightness. The BI is on by the way right now. So it's going to intelligently change my brightness. You see the brightness went down to 53 because the ambient environment is dark and the screen kind of looks perceptually the same to me. Then there's the low blue light thing. You can adjust this to make the screen less blue light or more blue light. To me, this should be the opposite <laughs> if you want to have it set on five that should be more blue light but it's actually the amount of protection from blue light so the higher the value the less blue light anyway you will get the idea obviously dark theme is going to be brighter text light theme is going to be darker text this is what light theme looks like when light theme is selected so even with light theme if you like that kind of thing i do for certain things i use visual studio and light theme i use visual studio code in dark theme i don't know why it's just the way it is okay but if you take a look at if we oh oh god if you switch that to dark theme coding on the monitor and you're using a light theme, oh, that's going to be too bright. That's what kills people. But now when I set coding to light theme, it's perfect for a light theme. This is what they're talking about when it comes to eye protection. So that's kind of appreciated because that's the kind of stuff you just set and forget most of the time. But when the monitor automatically handles that for you, that's kind of helpful. This is sounding like a sponsored video because I'm talking about all the features that this thing has. What does it matter? Like, does it matter to us? This is not a sponsored video, by the way. However, I do get some support from members of the channel. Thank you to the members of the channel. If you're considering becoming a member, there is a join button right down below where we do live streams that are just members only. I do separate videos for members. So if you want to join the community, you're welcome to. Thank you so much. By the way, you can just subscribe. That's free. If you're not yet subscribed, you'll get content like this. We talk about developer related issues, developer related content. And sometimes we talk about monitors that are for programmers. Actually, I've never, never talked about that. And until now. One thing I noticed right away about this monitor is that it's bigger. But not only is it bigger, because you can get a 32 inch monster, right? And it'll be just really, really wide. This is a three by two aspect ratio, which is different than the 24 inch version. That one is a 16 by 10. This one goes to 3840 by 2560. Unusual ratio, right? But it turns out it's actually pretty good for programmers. You can see a lot more code vertically. I can see a lot of lines of code right now. And this is the default setting. Let's just call it a wall of code, okay? The height of this thing is not gonna disappoint you. But what's cool is that it's also wide, so you can have two of these side by side. I actually don't know what kind of mode you would use for one light theme and one dark theme editors, but here we are. I would probably need to change this so that they're similar. Visual Studio on the right, VS Code on the left, and they both look pretty natural, just taller. So this aspect ratio is actually really good for programming. So aesthetics aside, it's a good monitor and it's not expensive. I mean, it's not cheap. This one is 600 bucks for the 28 inch version. It's $400 for the 24 inch version, but it's not crazy expensive. One other very important thing that I wanna point out is the coating. It's got this matte coating on it. It really dulls 
the reflections. So there's a light right over there. It's actually that light reflecting off of this thing. And you can see that it's nearly impossible to see the reflection. So it's gonna be less distracting for sure. Here's that same light in the LG and uh, <laughs> Here's that same light in another monitor I have. This is the EVE monitor. It's a 27 inch monitor. Looks really good for playing games. It's got a nice stand on it, but you can see the reflection is like a, almost like a mirror. Hey there. Let me know if you want to see a review of that one too. As a side note, do you like reflective monitors or matte monitors or somewhere in the middle? Let me know in the comments down below. Just curious to find out what most people like. Some final thoughts on this. Um, is it a good monitor? Yes, it's an excellent monitor, but only if you are a programmer. It's got perfect features for what a programmer would want. From the aspect ratio to the eye care features to the lighting that's built in and the controls for dark mode, light mode, the automated stuff. So professional programming this is the monitor it's good if you're gonna be doing anything else if you're gonna be doing gaming or uh, photography stuff or video work probably should consider something else what do you think would you get a monitor that's only for coding let me know in the comments and if you want to check out the video I did on the 24 inch version of this click on it right over here thanks for watching and I'll see you next time